Dear friends of Power Shoots TV, positive energy in Europe. Today I'm in the European Committee of the Regions and it's really my great pleasure to welcome the president of the EPP group in the European Committee of the Regions, Michel Schneider. Welcome. Welcome, hello. Welcome in the Committee of the Regions here. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, a lot of people, we know here the institutions, we know the European Commission, we know the Parliament, we know the Council, but most of the people don't know what is the community of the regions. Please explain us first what it is and what are you doing? Yeah. The Committee of the Regions is a relatively young institution. Uh -huh. We were founded in 1994, so we are 23 years old, mm -hmm. just arrived maturity. And uh, uh, we, ha we are 350 members mm. and all the members are uh, directly elected politicians on local and regional level. Mm -hmm. So we are the representatives of the of the local and the regional authorities of the European Union he, here in Brussels, mm -hmm. and our our uh, responsibility, our chance is to participate in the decision making process of the European uh, Union, uh, with all the knowledge that we have how European uh, law is working on the ground, because yes, we have to, to uh, yeah. we have to imp implement. 70 percent 80 percent of european law but actually the real side directly to the citizen yeah. exactly we are very close to the citizen yeah. Yeah. so uh, i'm here because we have very good news a very important issue it's called cohesion policy so please yes it's it's already worked out since a long time but now you got the, the good news please explain us about what it is cohesion policy is one of these uh, uh, complicated words that, yeah. we, that we use in the EU jargon, uh, you always have to explain what it is. Ex cohesion policy is, is a policy of solidarity mm -hmm. between all the member states of the Euro European, European Union. The idea is that all member states pay in, 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 the, in the budget of the European mm -hmm. Union and from this budget uh, support is distributed to regions that need help. So regions that uh, are lagging behind, economically speaking, they get the most part of the support, but all, in general, all regions can participate from this program. Another word for it is structural funds or, or yeah. regional policy. Okay. It's, a, it's a, a policy of solidarity that has never existed in, in human history before. Okay. It was created in the, in the European Union, and for me, it's one of the, of the most important achievements for the citizen of okay. the European Union. The citizen, all the citizens, can, if, they, if they open their eyes and look into their neighborhood, they see yeah. what, what is, has been supported uh, by European Union structural funds. And, and it's now, or it's because I, I was reading it's in t 2020, or it's already s now? Uh, the structural funds, they are implemented, they, uh, they are, they are uh, working in a seven-year period. Uh -huh. And now we are in the period 2014 until 2020, yeah. and after 2020, a new period starts. Okay. And we have, we in the Committee of the Regions now, we have started our discussion process. We have, we have produced a concept for mm. uh, structural policy after 2020. We do it as the first because most of the money is spent on local and regional levels. So yeah. That means very close to the citizen. That means for, for construct cities or for health, like for, for, for climate change? For su support of investment, uh, infrastructure, yeah. roads, for example, but also for, for uh, education, uh, yeah. vocational training. Creating jobs, for sure. Yeah, creating jobs. Yeah. We, the structural funds, it's, the, it's a development fund. It's the one mm -hmm. a big fund, and the other is the social fund, mm -hmm. European social fund. Yeah. So both sides. Yeah. Economy and the single citizen. Here yeah, now I ask myself a special question is, uh, you see we have in, in Europe the poor countries and the rich countries. Now if there's a huge budget now going to all member states, what's absolutely normal, we, have, we are solid there. But might be there a critic again from the rich countries to say, the citizen will say, yeah, but why my money goes out in the poor country or, yeah. or, or what's the benefit then for me? I, I never heard such criticism, but okay. if, if there was such criticism, it would be absolutely inappropriate because this is the idea of the European Union. And I underline union. Yeah, we, sure. we, we are together. We have common goals. We have common objectives. Mm -hmm. And in the Treaty of Lisbon, there is the objective that we all are obliged to support uh, uh, the, co the cohesion of, of all the regions, of mm -hmm. the weaker and the stronger regions. So more or less two thirds of this fund goes into the weakest regions. But okay. all the European Union profits by that.
but two, one third goes into regions that are maybe even richer regions because uh -huh. we see a need for special uh, interventions also in richer regions yeah. for the benefit of the whole European Union. Yeah, I see. I give you one example. Yeah. If, if, if we support a tourist area, yeah. maybe in the Canary Islands, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's money that goes into the member state Spain. Mm -hmm. But as there is tourism from all European states, mm -hmm. all European citizens in general profit from what is built over there. Yeah. And it helps out, yes, uh, in crisis time. Because we have also, I, I would say, this money now, is this also growing in projects or in, in problems like Brexit or uh, integration? Or is it really just really for the citizens in Europe at, at the moment? I think you could say there is no European policy that is so much in favor of the citizen, so visibly yeah. in favor and to the to the advantage of the citizen. Yeah. That's as, so positive, as, citizens. <laughs> as, as, as this regional policy, and that's that's why we in the committee of the regions we see the, mm. the, the the good use of it. That that's why we fight for a strong cohesion policy also after 2020, yeah. also after the Brexit. Yeah. That's really great. I would say last question. It is not to um, the president. It's more to the citizen, Michael. You, you are already a long time in the politics, busy. You, I know that you, you love Europe. And what, what is your challenge now for the future? Or what did you achieve already? Or can you maybe give an example, anything private or in, in your work where you can say, yes, we are proud to be Europeans? Well, I'm a member in the Committee of the Region since 15 years, but mm. I'm a member in my family for 20 years. Two days ago, I had my 20th anniversary of my, of my wedding. And I, I want to use the support that I get from my family mm. uh, in the next years to come to work in the Committee of the Regions uh, uh, in my position as, as president of the yeah. EPP group for, for the development and the good future of the European Union. Because I think this is a challenge we, uh, for all of us and it's, it's in, in, in historical view it's, it's worth to do it. Super, super. No. Thank you very much for this interview and for your positive energy in Europe. Thank you, Herr President. I'll see you outside. Thanks for listening. Yes, this is really a huge project for citizens here. We, have, we are really in the center where we have direct contact to you as a citizen. We believe in the future in Europe. There comes a lot of help. There's a lot of investment for the citizen in Europe. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks.